So I've been on YouTube a long time. I started posting videos for my local church in 2007. And fast forward to today, I've actually been able to get three silver play buttons, one gold play button. But more importantly, I've been able to help thousands of other people succeed on YouTube following what I call our seven step YouTube system. And coming up in this video, I'm going to share all seven steps with you. And actually, towards the end of the video, I'm going to share step number eight, which I added recently, because there's been some new changes on YouTube and social media overall. So let's just dive straight into it. Number one is reverse engineer. Before we even post a video, it's a question of what is this channel all about? Who is this channel for? How will this channel help people? What problem does it solve? How am I different? So you can reverse engineer your channel. But then you also use this 7R system on every video I post, I go through it. What is the purpose of this video? To be broad appeal and to reach a lot of new people? Is it for my core audience to let them know about a small event I'm doing that only has five spots? So we're gonna reverse engineer the channel, we're gonna reverse engineer each video, but we're also gonna reverse engineer our money plan. And so you wanna start with the end in mind of how you plan on making money. What's the best way to make money for the channel? And what's the best way to make money for an individual video? The way I originally built a six-figure income was I knew how to rank videos using this seven steps. And so I would think about something people were searching for, like what's the best greens juice mm -hmm. powder? Well, I ranked this video, I put an affiliate link in the description, commissions were like 30%. That one video earned me $20,000. There it is. Yeah. And the whole thing followed these seven R's because start with the end in mind, you know, like reverse engineer. The reason this is a powerful framework is you could keep coming back to it because you never graduate. I don't know. You're always of like the next time through, you're like, what are the new opportunities? Now AI is here. What are the new topics I could talk about? There's YouTube ads, different ways of earning money. Yep. Do we, are we launching a membership site? Should we start channel memberships? Should we create a physical product? Like it, it's just an, it's a reminder to check back in and say, okay, based on where we are now, what are the next best moves moving forward? Yeah. So then we get kind of more into specific video strategy, but again, all these steps can also apply to your channel at large. Research would have to do with step two, keyword research, topic research, competitor research, trend research. It's it's what's the most strategic video that I should I make? It's also maybe eva evaluating the competition. I think uh, Sun Tzu, from the Art of War military strategy book said only fight winnable battles. Right. So it's like, sometimes we are doomed to fail from the start, but a little bit of research would have helped us actually win. Because what people do is they just run out guns blazing, but a smart military general would say, wait a minute, what are the enemy's forces stronger than ours? Yeah, they got double the forces. All right, well, we can't take them head on. Are their weapons superior? All right, well, what, what does the terrain look like? But history has shown us that weaker forces, lesser weapons, disadvantaged uh, army has created victory because they actually approach things different. Oh, well, their numbers are greater than ours. Then we're going to take advantage of these trees over here and go guerrilla warfare because we can't fight them in the open. Their force is too strong, but we might be able to beat them here. What are our strengths? So when you research the competition, you're also identifying, well, okay, here's some gaps in the market or here's how I could create a unique advantage. And my, one of my favorite quotes that Sun Tzu said is, every battle is won before it's even fought. That's right, yeah. So reverse engineering research are such overlooked stages in the content creation journey, which then gets us to record. Now you're actually pressing record. You've outlined your video based on the first two steps. Be brief, be bright, be fun, and be done. Mm -hmm. Set your gear up, film it, you know, if you've planned ahead, is there gonna be props in your video? Are you gonna use a visual illustration? Are you gonna draw out a framework? Is it just talking head? Like, how do you wanna show up? Just uh, all that preparation can help you record better. Then you release your video step four the right way. That's gonna be optimization, title, thumbnail, description, end card, playlist, tags. If YouTube gives me the opportunity to fill out data, AKA metadata, I wanna use it. How is YouTube gonna know what your video is about if you don't support it with metadata, the searchable terms, the things people are searching to describe your video in the tags, description, and title. So you just don't wanna cut corners there. Even more importantly is what you say in your video because YouTube is reading what you're saying. Transcribe it. Yep. So just really optimizing 
that the release of your video and the most important things being the title, the thumbnail and the topic itself. StreamYard is our go-to platform for streaming to YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and other platforms easily. StreamYard gives you the power to produce your own show at a high level with a super easy to use interface that allows you to do transitions, add your own branding and add text lower thirds. I personally love and use StreamYard to live stream my Coffee with Cannell show, to do interviews, to bring on special guests. And I love the local record feature that allows you to have peak quality when bringing on guests and capturing the video and the audio separately. So if you want to, you can take your final production to a whole nother level. As a podcaster or video creator, this is the ultimate tool. So if you wanna create better content with more simplicity and less stress, grab your free trial of StreamYard today at streamwiththink.com. Now, let's jump back into the video. Step five is rocket. And this is an interesting step because if you've done the first four steps right, your video can take a life of its own and you don't gotta do anything else. The YouTube algorithm sucks your video away. People search for it. They find your video because it ranks. Your video starts being suggested on the homepage or around other videos. And the reason we call it Rocket, it's kind of like all this preparation was up until this launch. And then when you start getting familiar with your YouTube analytics, behind the scenes, you can see, man, this video is taking off. Rocket is if you've done everything right, you put out a video and it doesn't just get views today, but it, it just keeps going for weeks, months, and years to come. YouTube's the only platform that'll do that. But then also Rocket has another piece, which is we can support the video. I, I'll never forget, you know, I was talking to my friend, Neil Patel, big email list builder. He's oh, built yeah. a huge email list. And so one of the ways where he had an unfair advantage on his YouTube content was when he had a new video come out, he'd send an email. Boom, 5,000, 10,000 views would drop on it. They actually watch the whole thing because they know who he is and they want that kind of SEO training or whatever. And so he could rank his videos relatively easy and, and kind of get them going. And that's the idea. Rocket would be like, what kind of jet fuel could I put behind this video? Just to get lift off quicker. Yeah. Can I share it on social? Can I send it? And, and this is a great thing to debate because in some cases, sending traffic from external so social media is not always helpful mm. because if they're not like people say like, how do I use my Instagram to grow my YouTube? And my best answer is you don't, you grow your YouTube with YouTube. Mm -hmm. You do the first four steps and the video rockets on its own because people are already on YouTube. And if the algorithm suggests it to them, they probably wanna watch it and they'll like it and it'll get even more views. And the problem is if someone's watching these short reels on Instagram, number one, they probably don't even wanna leave. But number two, they if they go to YouTube, they might not stay and even give you watch time. So it's not all traffic is the same. Yeah. Nevertheless, if you're just starting, you're just scrappy, just getting going, you wanna do this stuff, share it on LinkedIn, put the newest video in your email signature. There's some teams, if you have like an agency or a team, when the new video comes out on Tuesday, their whole team has to watch the video and let the whole thing play so it gets complete watch time. <laughs> right. So it's like, that's the mindset you need. You're, you're, you're fighting for every view at the beginning. You're, you're starting from scratch with a brand new brand that is startup culture, it's startup mindset. So that's what Rocket is, and there's many different things that we could do there. And then review is reviewing the analytics, studying the video's performance. We know that what gets measured gets improved. Mm -hmm. So starting to learn what analytics matter most, what can I learn from that video so that I can improve my next one. And review has actually a short-term implication as well. I was talking to Graham Stephan on our podcast and he talks about how oftentimes when he launches a video, if it's not popping off, he knows, oh man, I didn't, maybe I didn't get the title exactly right or the thumbnail right. And he'll sometimes change the title and the thumbnail one, two, three, four, five times in the first couple hours of an upload. Oh, that early even, okay. Yeah, yeah. now that's a sixth sense type of behavior and he's got a massive audience, so he's getting a lot of feedback in that short amount of time. True. If someone was like, oh, that's what Graham does. I got 23 subscribers. I'm gonna change my thumbnail. There's no one's even seeing it. Like you're, you're not even getting a volume of impressions to watch a different trajectory of the video. So learning these skills is important and review could be, I would say for most people, follow the steps, get a good title and a good thumbnail and just roll with it. Yeah. 
there has just been a rollout now to a majority, including small channels of YouTube's new split testing feature, which allows you to start with up to three thumbnails right at the beginning, which kind of solves this for you. So it's not guesswork. It's not like, should I change the thumbnail? It's like, if you design up three thumbnails, YouTube will then split test those and then optimize the best one. But sometimes it could be as easy if you're kind of a mid-sized creator, I'll wake up, we, we auto post or we schedule upload our videos. And the first thing I do when I wake up is check my phone and I read the comments. Yeah. It could be a toxic place to go first thing in the morning. But what I'm usually looking for is if there's any dissonance, like someone goes, oh yeah, man, like I'm glad I clicked on this video because this is not what I thought it was going to be. And this is way better. I thought like if I get anything like that or, oh, you're kind of clickbaiting here or man, this is great. Or I'll just look at the performance and I've developed that sixth sense as well. I'm like, man, I know this is good. Like I've just, I've posted thousands of videos. So I'm like, I know this is good, but like, it's kind of flat. Could I re could I pivot this title different? This just, you know, the thumbnail different without tools. Mm. So that's kind of a sixth sense you could develop. So that could be review real time. The other thing about this step is earlier in our conversation today, we talked about how when you're just starting, go quantity first, worry about quality later. I wouldn't want anyone to get stuck on step six on their first video. Mm. Yep. You're not gonna build a campfire around the analytics of your first video. Your priority is post 50 videos and then go back and review all 50 of them and say, what can I learn? Which ones did best? What are the bright spots? What are some of the topics that stood out? And so while you definitely can benefit from studying analytics early on, it kicks in once you actually have a big enough data set to actually analyze. So, so far in this video, we've been covering the 7R system, but kind of just at a high level. And if you're interested in actually going deeper, I do have a free on-demand class that you can watch at thinkmasterclass.com or just hit the link in the description. I think you'll love it because it'll help you not only understand the system better, but apply it so that you can start or grow your channel faster. And so uh, check that out. And now let's get back into the video. And finally, repeat, which we actually added a secret eighth R, I thought so. which is repurpose. Yeah, yeah. And so repeat is now based on everything I learned, how can I begin again more intelligently? It also at scale could be things like success leaves clues, make part twos. Mm. I've got, I've posted 50 videos. What are the top five? How do I make a part two to that? How do I follow that up with a related video? And so you're not, you're, you're not just repeating the process from scratch. You're repeating it with information, asking yourself questions like, you know, what, what do I want to happen next? What's the shortest path to revenue? What am I doing? I'm, I'm not, I, it's always about strategy. What video should I make next? What would be the most strategic video I should be, make next? What would be the most lucrative video I could make next? Cause I could tie it to different income streams because in doing so I've created money for the mission. How could I now going through this process, maybe alone one or 10 or a hundred times, how could I go through this process? How could I delegate now? So as I repeat, how do I do this whole thing I just did? Cause I mean, <laughs> just listening to me, the listeners are probably exhausted. They're like, Jesus, you're talking about the steps. I can't even imagine doing them. But this is, this is why so many of our students have had such uh, amazing YouTube success is cause there's a lot to this thing, but it, it is learnable. And when you learn these skills, and master a framework like this, you can create repeatable, predictable success on YouTube. And by having these prompts and cues, it's like, okay, now some money's coming in. Maybe it's not wise for me to keep editing. So my next step, I'm gonna reverse engineer. I'm going through this processes again. How could I maybe out outsource thumbnail editing? Or how could I maybe outsource video editing? Or how could I improve my workflow by tapping into some AI tools? Yeah. So having a reflection phase, is uh, that's that's the ninth R. The ninth R, there never, it is. <laughs> I've never said it. It's repeat and reflect. Yeah. Like reflect and begin again more intelligently. But then also the secret eighth R is uh, repurpose in the sense of any content lends itself to this, but especially podcasts, and we've all seen it. There's these long conversations with people, but then there's the shorts that come out of it. Yeah. And you could take a long form YouTube video, turn it into some shorts. You could take a long form YouTube video, turn it into some clips. And then you ask yourself, am I gonna repurpose my content onto other social media? And if we're in the reflect stage, 
If you're just getting started and you're barely able to sustain YouTube, I don't recommend getting distracted by other social media platforms, but now you might be like, okay, I've got some team in place or some system in place. I hired a virtual assistant. I've got an editor helping me. Maybe it's time to tackle TikTok. Maybe it's time to tackle Meta and start thinking about how I could DJ out my content and measure that as well. Is it worth the energy and the time? Perhaps it is. And how could I repurpose and get more leverage out of my content? I'll give you one more kind of advanced strategy too. Yeah. We do these things called like content marathons where probably the best way to say it would be, uh, if you look at Dave Ramsey's video podcast, one of the things he's known for is rants. Right. Oh, stupid. You're stupid. You're like going off on people. People get mad, you know, whatever. <laughs> of course, everyone's offended and fragile. Um, and so he'll go on rants. At the end of the year, it could happen anytime, they'll usually post a video called Top 5 Dave Ramsey Rants. Mm -hmm. That's repurposing the content into a new video, and that new video might do better than all the videos in the year before, because it's the highlights. Yep. Comedians, there's a comedian I like named John Christ. He does skits all year long, like independent YouTube videos that are skits or jokes. And then usually around the holidays, he'll do top skits yeah. and he'll just stitch them together into a new YouTube video. That's it, man. There's lots of ways you could do this, but one of the most underutilized opportunities for especially prolific content creators, you've been doing it for a while, you've built up a body of work, is thinking about how you could chop up and DJ the content that you've already created. Like as a video podcaster, you could just re-upload your top five episodes into one long episode. And where this is even crazier is this kind of content surprisingly hacks the, the YouTube algorithm. Watch time, right? Yeah, the watch time. One of the biggest misconceptions that blocks a lot of entrepreneurs and creators' success is they make assumptions and they pro project assumptions on things because they go, I wouldn't watch a four hour video, but other people would. If you look at Lewis Howes, one of the top podcasters, School of Greatness, study his top 10 videos. They're all like three and four hours long and they are compilations. Sometimes he'll take all the different doctors he's had on and they'll talk about a particular hacks for health. Mm -hmm. So so you'll, you'll package something new like how to hack your energy, boost your mood and feel better. And it'll be a three hour video of creating a theme from all of his conversations with people that could talk about medical ways to hack your energy and fitness and all that stuff into a, an original new video. And again, that original new video could get, in his case, millions of views. Don't get me wrong, this all takes energy. And and you could do that in the lazy way, but it's a whole, like, meaning you literally just stitch together and it's like, what? Because you keep starting and restopping. But if you re-edited, you've already done the work of interviewing a bunch of cool guests. That's right. and, and, and so if you think through what they've said and perhaps create a montage or a compilation of something that really hammers a particular promise, this content creation stuff takes a, a lot of time and energy. And if you go to the effort of making these videos, why not think about them more intelligently about how you can maximize them? Like the mindset on the farm is like nothing goes to waste. Yeah. Like we're gonna use the hooves, we're gonna use the skin, we're gonna use the organs, we're gonna use. And so it's kind of like in the content creation game, like nothing goes to waste. I'm gonna think about how I can maximize all this that I've put into it and get more um, leverage out of it. So that's kind of an overview of the seven R's with the eighth R of repurpose. And reflect, and, gotta add nine in there now, man. And <laughs> then, And then, yeah, so repeat, reflect, repurpose, and repeat the process. Mm. There's the seventh one. <laughs> if you have not seen our free masterclass yet, you're gonna love it. If you're serious about growing your YouTube channel, just go to thinkmasterclass.com for a one hour deep dive on-demand YouTube strategy class.